back to the part where we're going to start painting the paper part or the patty pan that our cake is sitting in. And you can see that it's got lots of different colours and lots of different tones in there. So I'm going to start working with a warmer red than I used in the cake part. And I'm actually wetting my page first because I'm going to start with a wet on wet technique. And I'm using the medium size and a small brush to do this part because there's some really small shapes in there and there's some details. But like I did before, I need to think about this as a solid shape first and foremost before I start putting any of the tones in. So I'm going to complete the whole area using the lightest tone that I can see on my image. So I am working in an up and down vertical brush stroke because I know that this is the way that this the light falls on this part of the image and you can see how I'm actually putting in the lines and locking in those darker shadows where they are but I'm actually leaving some white spaces in between because I know that they're going to be the highlights of the tips of the paper. And they're going to show how it is folded into that concertina kind of pattern. So the parts that I'm leaving white are the parts that are sticking out. They're the parts that are being hit by the light. So they're catching the light and therefore they're lighter. If I wasn't going to leave them white, I would not be able to make them light because um, remember you need to leave the lightest tone. Now I'm coming back in here now with a slightly darker tone, back in over that mid-tone that I put in to start with, but I'm keeping those white bits white. I'm not going to lose those. Brushing in some shadows, and I'm not, I'm not painting it like a stripy kind of fence. I'm actually kind of leaving some parts untouched, some parts that I'm putting the dark tones in and some parts where I'm not continuing that line down. So you can see that the line of white sort of stops in different places. It's not all even because I want to show that the light, light when it hits something, isn't doesn't usually hit it in a straight line. Now I'm trying to put some of those darker shadows in down around the bottom. When I looked at the photograph that I was working from, they were quite warm down the bottom, almost like a brownie red, but I decided to keep it more of a purpley red just because it was going to go more with the way that I painted the, the um, cakey part and I thought in the end it would look better for my painting if I kept it a little bit more of a cool shadow rather than a warm shadow. But um, you can make those decisions when you look at your image that you're working from. Now I'm mixing those two reds together there and starting to put back in some of those details in there. Leaving that side there quite a bit lighter because we know that that's the lighter side of the cupcake as if the, the light was coming in from the right hand side hitting the icing the rounded edge of the cake and that side of the paper and making it a little bit lighter than the left hand side which is a bit more in shadow. You have to keep toing and froing with this part. I'm getting some darker blue now and I'm going to start putting that in along the bottom. I'm not doing a heavy line, it's a really fine line and I'm using my brush and my really tiny brush and then I actually dab it back with a bit of tissue because I got worried that it was too heavy. So you have to just be very light handed with the way that you use the darker tones when you're working with watercolour. Excuse my yawning, it's late. Now I'm putting some light back in again. 
back to my white because I've realized that I might need to try and move some of these lines down. And I don't necessarily take them all the way down in every single case because I don't want it to look like a stripy fence. I just want it to look like it's got some light hitting there, okay? Down near the bottom, I start to kind of dot it and I take my brush off. So it's not a whole solid line. It starts to kind of peter out and get a little bit more fragmented down near the bottom. And then I start to add some white highlights around those edges. Because when I looked into the um, edges of that um, image that I was working from, the parts on the side were quite light. This is the top around the top of the folds and they're actually quite a bit thicker at the top and then it gets darker and finer as it gets down near the bottom. So I'm just building those up. And the only way you're going to know how to do this in your individual um, cupcake is by really looking at your source image really, really carefully and keep looking back at it. Your eyes and the way you look and observe are 50% of your success in observation, drawing and painting. You can't just make things up with your imagination because it won't give you as much of a convincing detail in what you're doing. Now it's starting to look like paper, so I'm pretty happy with that. I've still got to do those sprinkles on top, so I'll come back to those later. Not sure how I'm going to do those yet. Maybe with a bit of a flap or maybe some um, salt as well. Just putting some shadows back into the cake around the top of the paper now. I already did those right at the beginning but I'm just coming back in and redefining them because as the painting develops you go back and you look at things that you've done before and you can say actually I need to just add a bit of that and you might not notice it until you do the part of the object that's actually beside it. 